Hello, welcome to the third video on APRO-GRD, an article by Sutha Murthy. In this video, we will take a look at the second subheading of the article titled From Hubli to Pune. APRO-GRD is an essay prescribed for the third semester BCom students in their paper Business English. In an earlier video, I have already discussed the introductory paragraph and the first subheading of this article, APRO GRD. In the introductory paragraph, Sudhamurti gives the reasons for writing the article. And the first subheading, a postcard to GRD, that was discussed in an earlier video, uh, uh, tells us how she was prompted or rather how she was irritated at something that uh, triggered off sending a postcard to GRT. And that incident was an advertisement that she saw, an advertisement by Telco Motors, now called Tata Motors, that uh, had called for uh, that had called for male engineers to an interview and it was specified in the advertisement that lady candidates need not apply. So saying this, Sutamurti, uh, who was an excellent uh, academician, she was top in her class and she was so f uh, furious that she immediately sent a postcard to GRD registering her protest against the gender discrimination shown by the Tata group and especially Telco. Now, in this video, we will be looking at the second subheading from Hubli to Pune. This is a fairly long section and she gives a very detailed description of how she uh, goes to Pune to attend the interview. The first section ends with Sudha Murthy receiving a telegram stating that she had to appear for an interview at Telco's Pune facility and that interview or the travel would be at the company's expense. So from Hubli to Pune, the second sub subheading describes her visit to Pune and what happens afterwards. The last section which will, which will be discussed in another video is leaving Tata. From Hubli to Pune. Now, as this is a long section, I have divided into it into a few smaller uh, sections. Uh, let me read the first paragraph from Hubli to Pune. I was taken aback by the telegram. My hostel mates told me I should use the opportunity to go to Pune free of cost and buy them the famous Pune saris for cheap. I collected rupees 30 each from everyone who wanted a sari. When I look back, I feel like laughing at the reasons for my going, but back then they seemed good enough to make the trip. It was my first visit to Pune and I immediately fell in love with the city. To this day, it remains dear to me. I feel as much at home in Pune as I do in Hubli, my hometown. The place changed my life in so many ways. Uh, so this a descriptive account begins with a very uh, a very casual kind of writing where she talks about uh, how she took the uh, you know took the trip or the pune trip in a very casual manner she was actually shocked on receiving the telegram she had never expected a reply to her postcard to grt but then she was encouraged by her hostel mates to attend the interview because pune saris were very cheap and so she collected money from each of them and uh, she thought only about sightseeing and shopping when she made the trip. But during her first visit to Pune itself, she immediately fell in love with the city. And she records that Pune is her second home, second only to her hometown, Hubli, and that the place changed her life in so many ways. Moving on, let me read the article. As directed, I went to Telco's Pimpri office for the interview. There were six people on the panel and I realized then that this was serious business. This is the girl who wrote to GRD 
I heard someone whisper as soon as I entered the room. By then, I knew for sure that I would not get the job. That realization abolished all fears from my mind. So I was rather cool while the interview was being conducted. Even before the interview started, I reckoned the panel was biased. So I told them rather impolitely, I hope this is only a technical interview. They were taken aback by my rudeness and even today, I am ashamed about my attitude. The panel asked me technical questions and I all answered all of them. Then, an elderly gentleman with an affectionate voice told me, Do you know why we said lady candidates need not apply? The reason is that we have never employed any ladies on the shop floor. This is not a co-ed college. This is a factory. When it comes to academics, you are a first ranker throughout. We appreciate that, but people like you should work in research laboratories. So uh, this is a description of the interview. And as I mentioned earlier, she went in a very casual manner, but as soon as, as, soon as she entered the room, she understood that it was a serious interview. And immediately after she entered the room, she heard someone whisper that this is the girl who wrote to GRD. And so she immediately found an impression in her mind. She believed that they had called her for the interview only because she had sent a postcard to GRD. So she decided that she will be very rude and impolite. And she was rather cool and fearless while the interview was conducted. And uh, later on, she says uh, she regrets her impolite behavior, her rude attitude. Now, anyway, the panel asked her many questions, many technical questions, and she answered all of them. And then at the end of the interview, one of the uh, members on the interview board, one of the members on the panel, a very elderly gentleman, but, with an, uh, but a very affectionate man, she tried to justify the reasons why they included the phrase or why they did not want lady candidates to apply for the post. And this is what he said. This is not a co-ed college. So he is implying that Sudha Murti was very young and immature and that she had no idea of what it is to work in a factory that will be mostly, um, uh, where there would be mostly male colleagues, male workers. And so she reminds her that this is no place for girls because this is a factory. And uh, he tries to um, encourage her uh, saying that she person people like her especially ladies like her or women like her who are good at academics are better in um, other professions like working in research laboratories and so on now let's see sudha murti's response to this i continue read i continue reading from the article i was a young girl from small town hubli my world had been a limited place. I did not know the ways of large corporate houses and their difficulties. So I answered, but you must start somewhere. Otherwise, no woman will ever be able to work in your factories. Finally, after a long interview, I was told I had been successful. So this was what the future had in store for me. Never had I thought I would take up a job in Pune. That city changed my life in many ways. I met a shy young man from Karnataka there. We became good friends and we got married. So she responded very boldly to the comment made by the elderly gentleman that it is time you started thinking in a different way. It is time you stop this kind of gender discrimination and give opportunities to women. So she said very boldly that it, they should start somewhere. Otherwise, no woman will ever be able to work in their factories. And uh, she was successful in her interview. She was offered the job and she took up the job in Pune. And again, she mentions that the city changed her life in many ways because it was there she met her future husband, Ennad Narayanamurti, the founder of Infosys. Uh, 
Um, so uh, in the next few paragraphs, she mentions how uh, she first met GRT Tata and her f a few encounters with GRT or J as he was affectionately called. Let me continue to read the article. It was only after joining Telco that I realized who JRT was, the uncrowned king of Indian industry. Now I was scared, but I did not get to meet him till I was transferred to Bombay. One day, I had to show some reports to Mr. Mulgaokar, our chairman, who we all knew as SM. I was in his office on the first floor of Bombay House, the Tata headquarters, when suddenly GRD walked in. That was the first time I saw APRO GRD. APRO means R in Gujarati. That was the affectionate term by which the people at Bombay House called him. I was feeling very nervous, remembering my postcard episode. SM introduced me nicely. J. That's what his close associates called him. This young woman is an engineer and that too a postgraduate. She is the first woman to work on the telco shop floor. JRD looked at me. I was praying he would not ask me any questions about my interview or the postcard that preceded it. Thankfully, he didn't. Instead, he remarked, It is nice that girls are getting into engineering in our country. By the way, what is your name? When I joined Telco, I was Sudha Kulkarni, sir, I replied. Now I am Sudha Murthy. He smiled that kindly smile and started a discussion with SM. As for me, I almost ran out of the room. So this is how she, Sudha Murthy describes her first meeting with GRT. And she was extremely nervous because she thought that GRT would bring up the postcard episode and uh, she would be questioned by him and so on. She was uh, afraid that um, she would have to give some kind of an explanation for uh, that postcard and so on. But GRD was very nice to her. And uh, because she was very young and uh, inexperienced, she did not uh, want to talk more to him. You know, she did not feel like talking more to him. Uh, let me continue reading the article. After that, I used to see GRD on and off. He was the Tata Group chairman and I was merely an engineer. There was nothing that we had in common. I was in awe of him. One day, I was waiting for Murthy, my husband, to pick me up after office hours. To my surprise, I saw GRD standing next to me. I did not know how to react. Yet again, I started worrying about that postcard. Looking back, I realized GRD had forgotten all about it. It must have been a very small incident for him, but not so for me. Young lady, why are you here? He asked. Office time is over. I said, sir, I am waiting for my husband to come and pick me up. GRD said, it's getting dark and there is no one in the corridor. I will wait with you till your husband comes. I was quite used to waiting for Murthy, but having GRD waiting alongside made me extremely uncomfortable. I was nervous. Out of the corner of my eye, I looked at him. He wore a simple white pant and shirt. He was old, yet his face was glowing. There wasn't an air of superiority about him. I was thinking, look at this person. He is a chairman a well-respected man in our country, and he is waiting for the sake of an ordinary employee. Then I saw Murthy and I rushed out. Jyadi called and said, Young lady, tell your husband never to make his wife wait again. So this is where the second subheading from Who Bleed to Pune ends. And we get the author's impressions of GRD, though she was very nervous and extremely uncomfortable around him. She used to observe him very discreetly. And she describes how GRD was a very well-respected person, though he was a very influential and a very powerful, a very rich man. He was always very kind and affectionate. 
JRD was a very simple and down to earth person. So, uh, this is the second subheading, and we have one more one more section uh, to discuss. Uh, the last and concluding section, leaving Tata, will be discussed in another video. I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to this lecture. Thank you so much for your patient listening and stay stay safe. Thank you.